news of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion's financial crisis spread within the estate, and the idle gossip reached a woman named Red Thread, who had been rescued by Jean Hui. Everyone here is so kind. What if something happens to Jean Hui? She worried. At that moment, Jean Hui hurriedly came to her. Miss Red Thread, I will take you home. The son-in-law said a great disaster is looming over the Jean family, and we can't drag you down. Tell me where your home is. I'll take you back. You're innocent and shouldn't have to suffer with us. Red Thread, touched by Jean Hui's concern, asked Jean Hui, do you like me? Jean Hui blushed instantly, unable to utter a word. Red Thread, stepping closer, asked, do you despise me for being tainted by others? Jean Hui hurriedly explained, no, no, your spirited nature only makes me respect and admire you more, seeing you as purer and more flawless. At these words, Red Thread took Jean Hui's hand, declaring, Jean Hui, from today on, I am your wife. Hearing this, Jean Hui was momentarily stunned by the sudden happiness, but then quickly shook his head, I, I'm not worthy of you. The son-in-law said you come from a noble family, I'm not your match. Before Jean Hui could refuse further, Red Thread pushed him into the room and then onto the bed. Jean Hui had unexpectedly experienced his wedding night before Shen Lang. Meanwhile, Shen Lang was pondering his next moves in his room. Everything was proceeding according to plan, but the only crucial element missing was a response from Su Chanchian. While considering whether he needed a backup plan, Jean Zhong came to report that someone had come to collect the debt. Shen Lang was puzzled. Didn't the Hidden Origin Society just leave? Jean Zhong clarified, it's not someone from the Hidden Origin Society, but the owner of the brocade and embroidery pavilion, Lin Ma. He claims you owe him 1,300 gold coins, principal and interest included. Shen Lang was baffled. When did I ever owe him money? Moreover, Lin Ma fled overnight when his son Lin Jua died. Now that the Jean family has just encountered trouble, he immediately comes knocking. That's quite proactive of him. As soon as Shen Lang entered the living room, Lin Ma began his performance, loudly accusing Shen Lang of deceiving him out of 1,000 gold coins with a stolen dye formula. The official standing behind him appeared to be from the Yu Kingdom Weaving Bureau. Could it be that this guy filled the gap left by the Su family, hence his newfound confidence? Shen Lang politely inquired, Master Lin, have you perhaps taken over Su Guanyin's business? Lin Ma did not deny it, stating he had indeed taken over Su Guanyin's position thanks to the favor of the Weaving Bureau officials. However, Lin Ma was not interested in further discussion and demanded repayment. To avoid affecting his plans, Shen Lang decided not to entangle further with him, acknowledging the debt and instructing Jin Zhong to retrieve 1,300 gold coins from the treasury, settling the principal and interest in one go. Unexpectedly, Lin Ma became even more demanding, interrupting Shen Lang to claim that the mythical Turtle Count's mansion also owed him money, insisting on settling that as well. Shen Lang was shocked. When did the mythical Turtle Count's mansion ever owe you money? Lin Ma started calculating with an abacus. In the past, the mythical Turtle Count's mansion would supply silk seeds to both the Su and Lin families. This year, however, there were none. Therefore, the loss incurred by our family should be borne by the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, totaling 3,300 gold coins. Lin Lin Ma's actions infuriated Shen Lang to economically blockade the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. The Lin family had refused to accept the cocoons they provided. Now, they are using this as an excuse to extort the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Just then, Shen Lang's another enemy, Zhu Wenhua, burst in with officials, claiming he was suspected of murdering his father, Viscount Zhu Lanting, and needed to be taken away for interrogation immediately. Seeing the officials in front of him, Shen Lang began to analyze step by step. With Zhu Wenhua's ability, if there wasn't a major figure backing him, it would would be impossible to mobilize people from the Court of Judicial Review. Now that the mythical Turtle Count's mansion is on the verge of collapse, the Sovereign would certainly not make an unnecessary move, but would continue to bestow kindness and show mercy. And Zhu Rong, the governor, following the Sovereign's lead, would have no reason to push the wall along with him. Thinking this, Shen Lang was unconcerned. As long as it's not these two acting, then the others have no real power to harm me. Shen Lang negotiated again with Lin Ma, Master Lin. The mythical Turtle Count's mansion is currently in some difficulties. Could this money be delayed for a few days? Seeing this, Lin Ma's expression turned cold. Paying debts is natural and right. I must get this money today. Shen Lang, in a difficult position, said, Please allow me three days to prepare. I can write you an IOU. How about I return 3,500 gold coins to you in three days? Lin Ma thought for a moment and said, For the sake of the mythical turtle count, I'll give you three days. Holding the IOU written by Shen Lang, Lin Ma mocked, You were so arrogant and unrestrained before. Did you ever think you would have such a miserable day? Then he turned and left. At this moment, someone knocked on the table to remind Shen Lang, Zhu Wenhua, dressed in black official attire, was sitting on the side. He had now taken over Wang Lian's position and became the chief clerk of mythical Turtle City. Now that you've settled your personal matters, come with us. Explain clearly how you killed my father. Shen Lang bowed and said, honorable officials, I don't know why, but I'm sweating profusely. To avoid being rude, please allow me to change my clothes. Zhu Wenhua sneered, in this autumn and winter, young Master Shen is actually sweating profusely. I'm afraid it's the cold sweat of guilt. After a while, 
Shen Lang, with a dark expression, arrived in the study and called for Shen 13. He had intended to keep the peace and give Lin Ma some time, but now that Lin Ma dared to extort him, since you're so eager to die, I'll have to satisfy your wish. 13. You go and take Lin Ma's worthless life without anyone noticing. Since he thinks he's so great, let's make his death a bit more unique, and it must not be traceable back to the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Shen 13, known for his violent killings, isn't one to scheme. He didn't dare to ask questions, only knelt there asking Shen Lang for clarification. Shen Lang glanced at him and said, Take a bucket of sulfuric acid. The Lin family's house has been deserted for a long time, and they lack servants, so the toilet must be very dirty. Sneak into the Lin household, make the toilet unusable in any way possible by making it disgustingly dirty. Then, add laxatives to their food to cause them all to have diarrhea. Since the toilet is unusable, they'll have to use the outhouse. If no one is cleaning the toilets, the outhouse will surely have accumulated a lot of waste and thus methane gas. You then pour the sulfuric acid into the outhouse to create a large amount of hydrogen gas. When they go to the outhouse, the hydrogen and methane gas will mix. Then you ignite the gas in the outhouse, causing a big explosion. This way, who would think it was done by me? The mythical Turtle Count's mansion, also, before this, saw halfway through the planks of the outhouse so they fall in before causing the explosion. Such a unique death is definitely fitting for the arrogant Lin Ma now. After saying this, he ordered Shin 13 to get to work quickly while he prepared to deal with Zhu Wenhua and the others outside. However, Shin 13 remained kneeling on the ground, trembling and feeling numb all over, thankful in his heart that he had chosen to follow Shen Lang with such a ruthless person in the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. It's unlikely their enemies would ever defeat them. Jin Zhong came to report that Zhu Wenhua and other officials were already waiting in the living room, growing impatient. Shen Lang, upon hearing this, paid no attention and instead turned to ask Little Bing to bring his toolbox. A moment later, Little Bing carefully brought over a large box, knowing it contained the tool Shen Lang used to harm others. It seemed someone was about to be unlucky. Opening the box, it revealed dozens of sealed porcelain bottles of various sizes, all containing rare medicines and poisons. Shen Lang then picked one of the bottles and applied the green liquid inside to his skin. Little Bing, puzzled, asked, why would you apply this poison to yourself? Shen Lang, while straightening his clothes, replied, the usual excuses won't work on those people outside. You'll see why I'm doing this in a moment. As they were speaking, Little Bing's expression changed, and she let out a startled cry. Large red rashes had appeared on Shen Lang's neck and arms, frightening Little Bing, who thought it was smallpox. Shen Lang told her, the liquid I applied is caterpillar secretion, which irritates the skin, resulting in rashes that resemble smallpox. Then, with a mischievous smile, Shen Lang lunged at Little Bing, asking, are you scared? Unexpectedly, she, feeling pity, threw herself into Shen Lang's arms, exclaiming, I remember now, you applied this to my bottom while I was asleep last time, you're so naughty, but it really hurts, why do you mistreat yourself like this? Shen Lang comforted her, saying, Zhu Wenhua and the officials from the Court of Judicial Review are not so easily dismissed, if I don't make some sacrifices, they probably won't be. Little Bing, unfazed by the disgusting rashes, went ahead and kissed Shen Lang on the neck. Shen Lang was stunned, thinking, this girl is becoming shameless, if she continues to seduce me like this, I'm afraid I won't be able to hold back. A moment later, Shen Lang changed his clothes and returned to the living room. Upon seeing him, Zhu Wenhua began to interrogate him loudly, where were you on the day my father was killed? Shen Lang, looking feverish with a flushed face, answered weakly that he was in South County at the time. Wang Chisa from the Court of Judicial Review commented, what a coincidence, this Count Zhu Lanting also died within the boundaries of South County. Seizing the moment, Zhu Wenhua shouted, now that the time and place match, what else do you have to say? Shen Lang responded, feeling wrong, there are so many people who go to South County, why am I suspected just because I passed by? Before he could finish, Zhu Wenhua requested, Lord Wang, this man Shen Lang is a major suspect, it would be best to take him to the capital and give him a thorough interrogation in the dungeons of the Court of Judicial Review. Seeing that they were about to take Shen Lang away, Jean Mulan couldn't hold back any longer. She drew her sword, rushed into the hall, and yelled, whoever dares to touch my husband today, I will chop off his hand. Zhu Wenhua sneered, Jean Mulan, do you also intend to obstruct the Court of Judicial Review's case handling? My Zhu family did not bring a single soldier to arrest someone in your mythical Turtle Count's mansion. This is already the greatest respect we could show. You better not be ungrateful. Shen Lang stepped forward, took Mulan's hand, and said, Wife, don't worry. How could I, a man who can't even trust a chicken, possibly commit murder? I'll just go with them. I trust that the officials from the Court of Judicial Review will clear my name. After speaking, he voluntarily raised his hands, waiting for the guards to put him in shackles. But as his sleeves fell, the shocking rashes on his arms were exposed. Xu Wenhua, who had been wondering why Shen Lang was so readily giving in, was taken aback upon seeing Shen Lang's arms. This, this is smallpox. The guards, seeing this, dared not approach any further. Shen Lang took this opportunity to look even more pitiable. You asked why I went to South County. Unfortunately, I contracted smallpox. I heard that Dr. Zhang in the Valley of Splendor had cured smallpox before, so I went to see 
seek treatment. Before Shen Lang could finish, all the officials, including Zhu Wenhua, backed away as if they had seen a ghost, keeping their distance. Knowing that smallpox is a highly contagious disease that can spread through the air, these people, especially the officials from the Court of Judicial Review who came with intentions of capturing Shen Lang to gain merit, were not willing to risk their lives. As Shen Lang staggered towards them, claiming he would follow them to prove his innocence, they ran away in terror until they were outside the Count's mansion, where they finally caught their breath. However, Zhu Wenhua, having calmed down, felt something was off. Knowing Shen Lang, he did not believe Shen Lang would contract smallpox, yet all symptoms matched the disease. Despite his reluctance, Zhu Wenhua had no choice but to leave. Back inside the Count's mansion, Jean Mulan tightly embraced Shen Lang from behind. Soon, Shen Lang felt a warm wetness on his back as Jean Mulan cried, moved by the pain her husband must be enduring. Shen Lang, who usually couldn't stand the slightest bit of pain, was now suffering from the burning rash. Shen Lang quickly turned around and softly comforted her. It's okay, wife. To protect our family, my father-in-law has to pretend to be sick in bed and take the medicine I prepare, losing over 10 pounds. Compared to him, this is nothing. Besides, all the hardships we endure are to protect our family's legacy for centuries to come. It's all worth it. The most important thing is, now that they all believe I have smallpox, if any officials from the Court of Judicial Review were to die from it, no one would be too surprised, right? Meanwhile, at Lin Ma's house, Lin Ma excitedly said, how arrogant Shen Lang used to be, and now he's as docile as a dog. Not only did he pay me 1,300 gold coins, but he also acknowledged the debt I fabricated. It's truly satisfying. Lord Lin disdainfully added, after all, Shen Lang comes from humble origins. Even becoming a son-in-law of the Count's mansion can't change his lowly nature. Moreover, the Hidden Origin Society has formally demanded repayment of the debt from the Jin family. With only one month to repay 700,000 gold coins, we might as well wait to collect the corpse of the mythical turtle count. Hearing this, Lin Ma laughed and raised his glass, as if he could already see the extinction of the mythical turtle count's mansion, thrilled with excitement. Just then, Lin Ma suddenly felt a severe pain in his stomach, followed by everyone present. Lin Ma, with a dark face, asked his wife, did you not wash the vegetables properly today? His wife, also clutching her stomach, began to doubt herself. Moments later, unable to bear it any longer, they all rushed to the outhouse, but as soon as they squatted down, the planks under their feet broke. Lin Ma screamed as he fell into the cesspit, followed by the others. At that moment, the concentration of methane and hydrogen gas in the cesspit was very high. Suddenly, a torch was thrown in from outside the window. Just as Lin Ma tried to shout, his mouth was filled with excrement. The next second, a violent explosion occurred, and the Lin family's outhouse was blown to ruins, burying the entire Lin family in this fiery cesspit disaster. Meanwhile, the mythical Turtle Count's mansion also welcomed an uninvited guest. The charming and handsome black man standing before them is Ning Zheng, the nephew of Lady Jean and the fifth son of the sovereign. However, when he was born, a meteor struck the capital, causing death and injuries to hundreds. Coincidentally, his skin was as dark as charcoal, and he had a birthmark of stars on his chin, leading the sovereign to consider him an ominous sign and ordered him to be abandoned in the wilderness. Fortunately, he was protected by Lady Jin's family influence, allowing the young Ningjing to survive. This action caused the sovereign to develop a disdain for Su Pei Pei, leading to her departure from the capital soon after. Although Ningjing grew up, his unique appearance and stutter made him even more disliked by the sovereign, who wouldn't see him even once a year. Despite this, the grateful Ning Zheng, upon hearing that the mythical Turtle Count's mansion was in trouble, immediately brought several boxes of money to support his aunt. Lady Jean, deeply moved by the sight of the boxes, knew Ning Zheng was not favored by the sovereign and lived modestly. Yet, at a time when everyone seemed eager to kick the mythical Turtle Count's mansion while it was down, Ning Zheng spared no effort to help, showing immense loyalty and affection. Shen Lang, keen and intelligent, was aware of his mother-in-law's connection with this fifth prince. When he learned that Ning Zheng had come to offer help, he immediately went to the front hall to welcome him. After exchanging pleasantries, they sat down, but the prince, being introverted, found himself at a loss for words. Shen Lang was also speechless, finding Ning Zheng's lack of conversation skills awkward. I can't rudely start the conversation myself. This atmosphere is quite awkward. At that moment, Lady Jean couldn't help but speak up. Your Highness, my husband is unwell and unable to come and greet you, for which I am very sorry. Ning Zheng's face turned red, and he quickly responded, It's all right, I'll pay my respects to my uncle later. Then Lady Jean spoke again, Your Highness, although our family is in dire need of money, as your aunt, I cannot accept your money. Please take it back. Upon hearing Lady Jin's words, the usually reticent Ning Zheng's dark face instantly turned a shade of black and red, and his stutter worsened. Aunt, you have saved my life. I must repay this debt. I have sought permission from my father to allow Jin Mutsong to study at the Imperial Academy. A decree from my father will arrive soon. Shen Lang was astonished. Not only is this fifth prince here to offer financial aid, but he's also looking to save Jin Mutsong's life. On the surface, it's about studying at the Imperial Academy, but in reality, it's about offering 
ensuring protection within the fifth prince's residence. Considering Ning Zheng's lack of favor with the sovereign, it's hard to imagine what it cost him to secure this lifeline from such a stingy and ungracious man as the king. Ning Zheng, with his face burning red, had actually knelt outside the sovereign's palace for a day and a night. Later, Ning Zheng went to see the ailing mythical turtle count. Not wanting to disturb the count's rest, he merely paid his respects as a junior before taking his leave. Before parting, Ning Zheng mentioned an important matter. Young Master Shen, be wary of my elder brother, the crown prince. He has long coveted your wife and seems determined to have her. Upon hearing this, Shen Lang's expression changed. Crown Prince Ning Yi dares to covet my wife? He then thanked the fifth prince with a bow. As time passed, the debt crisis of the mythical turtle count became increasingly severe. Not only officials and nobles from all regions, but also the common people whom the mythical turtle count had once wholeheartedly helped, have forgotten past favors and joined in the rumor mongering. The accusations pointed directly at Shen Lang, forcing the death of the leader of a thousand households, Tian Heng, extorting 5,000 gold coins from the brocade and embroidery pavilions Lin Ma, defrauding Su Guanyin of tens of thousands of gold coins, and then causing the death of Su's entire family. All these funds were allegedly squandered by Shen Lang. The mythical Turtle Count's mansion was increasingly seen as filthy and shameless, with Shen Lang particularly loathed. For a time, everyone in the Yu Kingdom was calling for their punishment. Numerous imperial censors submitted petitions, earnestly requesting the sovereign to punish them. Finally, the sovereign decreed that if the mythical Turtle Count's mansion did not repay the debt on time, Cliff Watch Island, pledged as collateral, must be handed over to the Hidden Origin Society. Upon hearing this news, Zhu Wenhua also burst into excited laughter. There are only 13 days left until the repayment deadline, and the entire province of the Southern Journey's taxes don't even amount to 700,000. Where can the Jean family find such a sum? It seems the mythical Turtle Count's mansion is doomed this time. Shen Lang, I'd like to see how you can turn this situation around. The next day, as Shen Lang was leisurely drinking tea and reading in his study, Jean Mulan was angrily complaining about the old nobilities kicking them while they were down. She and her mother had been borrowing for a long time and had only managed to symbolically borrow 1,000 gold coins. Shen Lang, calm and collected, hugged Jean Mulan and softly said, short-sighted fools. Mulan, don't worry, your husband has a way to come up with the 700,000. Just then, Jean Hui interrupted their moment. My wife, Red Thread, requests an audience. Shen Lang was surprised. Your wife? Impressive. That was quick. We should find time for a wedding ceremony for you too, to celebrate properly. Let her in. Moments later, the proud Red Thread walked in and sat down directly in front of Shen Lang. Jean Hui was shocked at his wife's attitude towards his master. He couldn't afford to offend his lord, but his wife demanded reverence too. This situation left Jean Hui in a difficult position, not knowing what to do. Shen Lang, observing the couple, was speechless. Jean Hui, how are you even more henpecked than I am? You're completely under your wife's thumb. Feeling helpless, Shen Lang had no choice but to help Jean Hui out of the situation, asking him to wait outside. Once Jean Hui had left, Red Thread went straight to the point without wasting words. Young Master Shen, I know you are aware of my identity. I had planned never to return home, but now that the mythical Turtle Count's mansion is in dire straits, I am willing to go back and ask my parents for help. Indeed, Shen Lang was aware of her true identity. She is the daughter of Jing Tua, the second in command of the Western Army of the Yu Kingdom and the General of Pacifying the West, Jing Red Thread. Born with a frail body, making childbirth difficult, and known for her peculiar temper, she likely had a strained relationship with her family, hence her decision to leave home. That she would offer such assistance now speaks volumes of her character. Shen Lang then bowed in thanks. Miss Sheng's nobility of spirit is fully appreciated. You need not worry about the affairs of the Count's mansion. Please, just enjoy your days here in the mansion with Jean Hui. Red Thread looked at Shen Lang, momentarily surprised, then asked again to confirm, Are you sure you don't need my help? Shen Lang smiled, Yes, we really don't. Seeing this, Red Thread no longer insisted, stood up, performed a courtesy farewell, and left. When she walked out, Jean Hui had been waiting for a while. Seeing his wife's stern face, Jean Hui quickly approached to ask about the outcome. Once back at their place, Red Thread immediately pulled Jean Hui over and asked sharply, Jean Hui, are you hiding something from me? Hearing his wife's question, Jean Hui's eyes darted around, and after a long pause, he reluctantly said, Red Thread, I'm sorry, there are some things that even if I die, I cannot disclose to anyone. He had expected Red Thread to be angry, but instead, she threw herself into his arms. If you won't tell, I won't ask. Your loyalty is your greatest virtue. After Red Thread left, Shen Lang stood at the window, realizing truly what it meant to see one's true character in dire times. Suddenly, Little Bing burst into the room, shouting, Young Master Shen, Miss Su Chan Chan has sent a secret message. Holding the letter, Shen Lang felt nervous. Su Chan Chan, you better not disappoint me. But as he opened the envelope, a wave of grievances hit him. The letter read, I've been sweeping the backyard of Chiu Yao'er for a month now. Can you believe there are dozens of women here, prettier than the sovereign's harem, fighting over a fallen leaf? Shen Lang couldn't help but laugh at this point. It seems the hobbies of martial artists really are different from
from ordinary people. He continued reading, Cho Yawer is an impenetrable devil. She neither likes women nor men. She has personally killed men, not less than 5,000, maybe 3,000. Shen Lang gasped at this, feeling a chill down his neck. The letter went on, the hierarchy here is strict, and I'm just a lowly floor-sweeping maid. Overstepping bounds invites hostility from all women. I've only tried to approach Cho Yawer a few times, only to be targeted by her personal maid, Green Ripples. If possible, I'd really like to kill her and take her place. Regarding Cho Yawer, she's a terrifying yet naive demoness. Despite her martial prowess, she has no interest in power or wealth. It can be said, even you, Shen Lang, with your looks and brains, are not a match for this perfect and domineering woman. At this point, Shen Lang was speechless. What are you even saying, Su Chan Chan? Have you been brainwashed by this demoness too? But what came next piqued Shen Lang's interest. Cho Yawer loves to hear stories. She has even listened to all of your boundless romantic affairs. However, the maid who told her those stories has been sent to clean the latrines. Shen Lang, Cho Yawer is a super bookworm. Anyone who can tell a good story can stay by her side. If you want me to get close to her, then quickly write a bold and thrilling story that can blow away the heavens, earth, and air, and most importantly, it must be filled with freedom. Just don't write a love story. I don't want to be punished to clean the latrines. The letter abruptly ended here. Shen Lang fell silent silent for a moment, then began to think. It seems he needed to carefully select an exceptional novel for this demoness. Shen Lang initially considered recommending the novel Battle Through the Heavens, but worried it might not satisfy Chiu Yawer's taste. Suddenly, he had a brainwave to blow away the heavens, earth, and air. It had to be none other than our Monkey King, Sun Wukong. He decided to copy out a version of the Monkey King's journey to obtain the scriptures. Shen Lang picked up the secret letter again and gently toasted it over a flame, revealing hidden text. This was the real content of the secret message. It described how Chiu Yawer often suffered from unstoppable nosebleeds and headaches, along with dizziness and double vision, sometimes even falling into comas. Despite consulting numerous medical texts and doctors, no cause could be found. Shen Lang fell into thought again. This clearly sounds like symptoms of chronic poisoning, but her reactions are different from Princess Ning Luo's lead poisoning symptoms. Who could be poisoning her? Could it be her brother, Chiu Xiao, aiming to seize her power? At that moment, Little Bing came to report that Jin Hui had important news. His mission, as previously instructed by Shen Lang, was to secretly invite members of the Heavenly Path Society. Knowing that the Heavenly Path Society's representatives had arrived, Shen Lang signaled Jin Hui to bring them to the underground chamber while he went to change his clothes. Shortly after, Shen Lang, dressed in lavish attire, appeared before the envoy from the Heavenly Path Society. Seeing Shen Lang's luxurious clothes, one of the envoys, the bearded man, couldn't help but mock. Rumors say the mythical Turtle Count's mansion is financially ruined, yet the son-in-law Shen Lang remains as extravagant as ever. Ever. Seeing is believing, indeed, Shen Lang didn't get angry but instead, smilingly, invited the envoy to sit down, knowing well the cost of his attire was indeed high, but it was specifically worn for the Heavenly Path Society's envoy. The bearded man sat opposite Shen Lang but looked down upon him, insisting on speaking with the mythical Turtle Count himself. Shen Lang stated, I have full authority over all affairs of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. The bearded man sarcastically replied, Has the mythical Turtle Count's mansion really fallen to the point where Mare's son-in-law calls the shots? Since you claim to have such authority. Does that include selling the entire Count's mansion castle? Shen Lang was taken aback. Who said we're selling the castle? The bearded man tossed over a secret letter, stating, the Count himself wrote to us, proposing a business deal worth several hundred thousand gold coins. The only valuable assets the Jin family has now are this castle and those 30,000 acres of fertile land, right? Shen Lang chuckled inwardly, thinking, these people really dare to dream, but it seems our plan to make them believe the Jin family is desperately trying to salvage what it can by selling off family assets assets has worked. Seeing Shen Lang's silence, the bearded man took it as an admission and began to calculate with an abacus. The Jin family's 30,000 acres are worth 90,000 gold coins, and the castle 200,000. This is the highest price we can offer. It might not be enough to pay off your debts, but it should be sufficient for you to start anew in another country. Hearing the bearded man's outrageous offer, Shen Lang interrupted, we invited you here not to sell our family's assets. The bearded man, displeased, said, the Heavenly Path Society is very busy. If you're not here to sell assets, then and why seek us out? Shen Lang clapped his hands, and Jin Hui came forward with a wooden box. We've brought you here to sell this item to you. The bearded man, upon opening the box and expecting nothing of significant value since he had seen countless treasures, was taken aback by what he found, a modern crafted mirror. The clarity with which it reflected his face was unparalleled by silver or crystal mirrors. Excited by its potential as a major business opportunity, considering its clarity and lightweight, he knew it would cause a financial storm once introduced to the market. Seeing the bearded man's reaction, Shen Lang knew the time was right and asked, How much do you think this mirror in your hands should sell for? The bearded man suggested such a precious item would typically be auctioned to the highest bidder. Shen Lang smiled, Auctioning won't make big money, we're targeting the retail market. Once this
this mirror hits the market, nobles will flock to it, setting an initial price of about 100 gold coins each. We can mass produce later, and even if the price drops, it won't go below 20 gold coins. At this point, the bearded man's attitude towards Shen Lang had taken a complete 180 degree turn. He humbly inquired about the cost of making the mirrors. When Shen Lang revealed that the cost was only one silver coin, the two envoys were utterly astonished. Shen Lang added, furthermore, with scale production, the cost can be further reduced to half a silver coin. Hearing Shen Lang's response, the envoys were completely blown away. With a cost of just half a silver coin and a selling price of 100 gold coins, the profit margin was unimaginable, either 2,000% or 4,000% profit. Considering this, the bearded man excitedly stood up. The Heavenly Path Society is willing to pay 10 gold coins per mirror to purchase the entire first batch. Shen Lang, however, responded calmly, I'm willing to sell to you, but we have a limited number of craftsmen, and the first batch consists of only 1,000 mirrors, and the price I'm asking is not 10,000 gold coins, but 1 million. The bearded man was taken aback, thinking Shen Lang must be out of his mind to ask for 1 million. You must be joking to demand such a price. Shen Lang continued, don't be surprised. I'm not just selling mirrors, but also the entire manufacturing process. The only requirement is that you purchase the glass from us. With this, my asking price of 1 million gold coins isn't too high, is it? Besides, you've been constantly oppressed by the Hidden Origin Society, right? This industry is not just a money-making opportunity for you, but also a chance to defeat them and become the top merchant guild. The bearded man was now visibly shaken, seeing it as a great opportunity to distinguish himself. Seeing his reaction, Shen Lang added fuel to the fire. If you're not interested, I might have to approach the Hidden Origin Society instead. Do you want to be under their thumb for another few decades? The bearded man realized that Shen Lang was not the idle son-in-law as rumored, but a business genius. He stood up to inquire further. How do you plan to sell the glass? Shen Lang smiled. I only ask for 5% of the profits from each mirror. What do you think? The bearded man pondered for a moment and then extended his hand. One million is outrageous, equivalent to the province of the Southern Journey's two years of taxes. This exceeds my authority. I can offer 400,000. If that works, we can deliver the gold coins to your mansion right now. Shen Lang, displeased internally, thought, your calculations are really something. 400,000 for my process, and then selling the mythical Turtle Count's mansion's assets to make up the 700,000 needed for the debt, right? The bearded man pressed on, with less than half a month left for the mythical Turtle Count's mansion to settle its debts. We are your only option. Don't miss it. He intended to corner Shen Lang, who, with a dismissive wave of his hand, issued an order to leave. Enough. There's no point in continuing this conversation with someone so narrow-minded and short-sighted. To squabble over such trivial matters in the face of a strategic opportunity is utterly foolish. No wonder you've been constantly suppressed by the Hidden Origin Society. The wealth this mirror could bring to the Heavenly Path Society is clear to you. I could have asked for more, but I didn't because all I need is the one million to secure a strategic victory. Since we can't agree, let's end it here. Jean Hui, see them out. The bearded man, insulted by such words, was furious. Don't forget, we're the only ones who can help you now. You'll regret it once I walk out this door. However, at this moment, the other envoy who had been silent finally spoke up. Young Master Shen, I agree to your terms. I'm Huang Tong from the Heavenly Path Society. Thank you for this strategic opportunity. You're right, even at a loss, we must seize it for the strategy alone, not to mention the astronomical profits involved. However, we need to see the first batch of products and confirm that they can be mass-produced before we can start cooperation. Shen Lang glanced at them, then signaled Jin Hui to lead them to the secret vault. Arriving at the vault, Jin Hui forcefully opened the door, and the dazzling light that followed once again shocked the two envoys. Inside, mirrors of various sizes and shapes were arranged, and the light they reflected under the candlelight made the whole room as bright as day. Taking a stick from Jin Hui, Shen Lang said, to prove how low the cost of these mirrors is, I don't need to take you to the workshop. I can show you right here. Before the envoys could react, Shen Lang struck the largest mirror in front of them. They rushed forward to stop him, fearing for the loss of what they saw as money. Shen Lang paused his action and turned to say, then, within the next 10 days, you will deliver the money to the Count's mansion. Although Huang Tong was somewhat troubled by the time frame, he agreed and asked Shen Lang to lay out all his conditions. Shen Lang stated, I want 700,000 gold coins and 300,000 raw gold nuggets. The rougher, the better, as if they've just been smelted from the mine. Huang Tong was puzzled by the request for raw gold nuggets, but understood better than to ask questions about matters he shouldn't inquire into. Lastly, Shen Lang emphasized, Wang Tong, this matter must not leak out in the slightest. When you deliver, it must be done quietly. Rest assured, young Master Shen, Wang Tong replied, there are only five elders in the Heavenly Path Society. Everything will be done according to your instructions, with no leaks whatsoever. The agreement was sealed with a handshake, a gesture of trust and commitment in such underground dealings. Given the tight timeline, Wang Tong dared not delay any longer. Taking a sample of the mirror, he hurried back to convince all members of the elders 
Elders Council of this once-in-a-century strategic opportunity. Meanwhile, in Jean Mutsung's study, the fat man held the fountain pen prepared by Shen Lang, beginning to showcase his legendary copying skills. With Shen Lang dictating the story behind him, he wrote swiftly, marveling, brother-in-law's treasures are indeed plentiful. With this pen, my writing speed has tripled. Jean Mutsung found the content of the book increasingly exciting as he copied it, growing more energized as he worked. After two days and one night, he finished the first segment, covering over 50,000 words and ending with the Monkey King being trapped under the Five Fingers Mountain. Shen Lang had intended to end the excerpt at the havoc in the Heavenly Palace, but feared Chiu Yaoer might not tolerate such a cliffhanger and might end up killing Su Chanchan in frustration, which would be counterproductive. He then carefully packaged the manuscript and handed it to a trusted spot, stressing the importance of delivering it directly to Su Chanchan. The spy promised to ensure its safe delivery, even at the cost of his life. Once the spy had left, Jin Mutsong approached Shen Lang, expressing his belief that this new book would surpass the popularity of boundless romantic affairs. Shen Lang knew the book would be a hit, but had no intention of making it widely known yet. He explained to Jean Mutsong that the book was written for one person in particular, and success would be defined by its reception by that individual. Jean Mutsong, puzzled, asked who this crucial person was. Shen Lang, with a serious tone, revealed that this individual was key to the survival of the Jean family, though currently in danger themselves. On the other side, after a long wait, Su Chan Chan finally received the manuscript. Astounded by its compelling storyline, she was convinced it was tailor-made for Chiu Yaoer and could outshine all rivals, securing her the coveted position of Chiu Yaoer's personal maid. The next day, aboard Chiu Yaoer headed to the hall to select a maid for storytelling. As blood trickled from her nose, her attendant, Green Ripples, quickly offered a handkerchief, though such incidents seemed commonplace to Chiu Yaoer, who simply wiped it away. Settling down, she inquired about the day's storytellers. Green Ripples respectfully informed her that four people had come forward, signaling them to enter. Storytelling was a fast track to advancement in the castle, but the mistress would tire of a story after four or five days, resulting in the storyteller's dismissal. Only I, Green Ripples, am her true confidant. This status allows Green Ripples to act as she pleases among the other women without fear of complaints. After a while, including Su Chan Chan, four women stood in the hall, and Su Chan Chan saw Cho Yaoer once again, stirring emotions within her. Cho Yaoer was lounging lazily in her chair, her striking figure making all other women seem ordinary by comparison. Turning around, Su Chan Chan noticed the other three women also gazing at Chiu Yaoer with adoring looks. Suddenly, she felt a malicious stare directed at her. Looking up, she saw Green Ripples looking down on her with disdain. Green bitch, just you wait. Once I stand beside Chiu Yaoer, I'll make sure you're dead. Then, Green Ripples announced the rules. Everyone must present a story summarized in 100 words. The most interesting stories will earn their tellers the right to stay. The story competition among the four women began with the first girl telling a story named The Tale of the Bandit Slayer, about a female hero who, orphaned from a young age and raised by a martial arts master, grows up to avenge her parents. Su Chan Chan found it overly simplistic and crude, doubting Cho Yaoer would find it intriguing, having likely heard hundreds of similar tales. It was the third woman's story that seemed to capture Cho Yaoer's interest, unsettling Su Chan Chan. Although Shen Lang's story was captivating, she worried the title wasn't sensational enough. Then, an idea struck her, and she declared her story's title to be The Buddha Must Be Destroyed. This title immediately caught Cho Yaoer's attention. Su Chan Chan then outlined the story. Millennia ago, a stone egg was born from the heavens and earth. Years later, it split open to reveal a stone monkey. This monkey, naturally mischievous, not only learned the 72 transformations, but also used his abilities to challenge gods, annihilate Buddha, and fight the jade. As her words ended, the mere synopsis had already deeply captivated Cho Yaoer. Green ripples, sensing trouble, quickly tried to select the third girl to stay during Cho Yaoer's moment of distraction, urging the others to leave. However, before she could finish speaking, Cho Yaoer directly pointed to Su Chan Chan, indicating her desire to hear the Buddha must be destroyed. Despite her reluctance to let Su Chan Chan stay, Green Ripples could not defy her master's order and had to comply, leading the other three women out. Shortly after, incense was lit for Cho Yaoer, who preferred to listen to stories without others around. Thus, in the vast hall, only she and Su Chan Chan remained. Su Chan Chan, adjusting her emotions, began to tell the story in earnest, constantly gauging Cho Yaoer's reactions. Shen Lang's writing is so profound, I'm really worried Cho Yaoer might not understand it, she thought, noticing Cho Yaoer's expressionless face. Oh no, did I actually guess right? Using the story given by Shen Lang, Su Chan Chan successfully captured Cho Yaoer's attention. To buy time, she deliberately slowed the pace of the story, but even the introduction had Cho Yaoer utterly fascinated, as if opening a door to a new world within her heart. Such a boundless and mysterious world is exactly what I've dreamed of. Thinking back on the stories I've heard before, I can't help but feel disdain. What even were those stories compared to this? Suddenly, Cho 
Xiu Yaoer stood up, interrupting Su Chan Chan, suggesting they pause there for the day. Su Chan Chan, alarmed, quickly asked, was it not good? Xiu Yaoer reassured her, I very much like this novel and intriguing story, and you've told it very well. It's precisely because it's so good that I need time to thoroughly reflect on this segment. Hearing Xiu Yaoer's praise, Su Chan Chan was so overjoyed she nearly cried. Then, Xiu Yaoer inquired, how many chapters does this story have in total? Upon learning the story had 100 chapters, Xiu Yaoer requested Su Chan Chan to stay by her side from that day forward, insisting on hearing the continuation of the story daily. Su Chan Chan was overjoyed, thinking, I've finally achieved my goal, but despite all my efforts, I couldn't stay by the demoness's side. Yet, Chen Lang did it effortlessly with just a few thousand words. I can't help feeling somewhat resentful. At that moment, Xiu Yaoer was no longer paying attention to her, instead walking straight to the viewing platform, her gaze forlornly fixed on the distance. She longed to explore the unknown world beyond her monotonous life, but was bound by the wait for someone whose identity she herself did not know, nor when they would arrive. All she could do was wait quietly. On the other hand, Shen Lang, catering to Chiu Yao's demand, had his brother-in-law tirelessly working like a mule. After five days of frantic copying, Jin Mutsong finally produced a 50,000-word masterpiece. With this, Su Chan Chan need not worry anymore. Now, we just await news from the Heavenly Path Society. At the Heavenly Path Society headquarters, Wang Tong effortlessly gained the elders' approval by simply presenting the mirror. The cost he revealed left the elders in shock, followed by excited exclamations. Heaven has eyes. The Heavenly Path Society will finally have its once in a millennium chance to turn the tables. With this mirror, we have nothing to fear from the Hidden Origin Society. Huang Tong added, the other party is willing to transfer the mirror-making technique to us, but the conditions are a bit tricky. They're asking for 1 million gold coins within 10 days, and now we only have 7 days left. Hearing this, two of the elders exchanged glances, uncertain. Then, the bald elder exclaimed decisively that the money must be provided. In light of the strategic opportunity at hand, 1 million gold coins was insignificant. We must pay, even if it's more. To avoid any delay, the head elder immediately ordered Huang Tong to gather the gold coins locally and then inquired if there were any other conditions from the other party. Huang Tong replied, their additional requirement is that the glass needed for the mirrors must be purchased from the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, sold at 5% of the mirror's price. The elders frowned upon hearing this, not because they were unwilling to spend the money, but they didn't want to be at someone else's mercy. After a moment of contemplation, the head elder decided to have Huang Tong first gather and send the gold coins as a gesture of sincerity, and then negotiate the glass procurement issue with the other party. Huang Tong, understanding the urgency, accepted the command and managed to deliver several hundred carts filled with grain to the mythical Turtle Count's mansion on the ninth day. This grand procession of grain carts attracted the attention of many onlookers, sparking rumors about the possible sale of the mansion and preparations for departure. Suddenly, a brash man on horseback charged at one of the grain carts, causing it and its contents to overturn, revealing the grain out of the bag. This act of sabotage was carried out by Zhang Ji, who wanted to verify the contents of the carts supposedly filled with grain. Unbeknownst to him, once the carts entered the Count's mansion, they were directed to a secluded courtyard, where the guards began to dismantle them. Opening the carts' hidden compartments revealed dazzling gold coins. Shen Lang, witnessing the gold, admired the Heavenly Path Society's efficiency, noting their centuries-old dominance in trade, and their adeptness at concealing such a straightforward gold transport. Huang Tong approached Shen Lang with a piece of unprocessed gold, stating, Young Master Shen, as per your request, 700,000 gold coins and 23,000 pounds of gold nuggets have been delivered. Shen Lang accepted the gold, remarking on its high purity as natural gold from the mines. Huang Tong added, the 300,000 gold coins should equal 21,000 pounds of gold, but due to the impurity of most nuggets, we've compensated with 23,000 pounds to ensure no loss on your part. Additionally, the gold coins are newly minted without any inscriptions, making their origins untraceable. Hearing Huang Tong's meticulous attention to detail, Shen Lang couldn't help but be impressed once more by the Heavenly Path Society's insight into human nature. He then turned to instruct Jin Hui, we can proceed now. Jin Hui, understanding immediately, followed the order and led a team to Cliff Watch Island. Noticing Huang Tong's hesitance, Shen Lang deduced that he was here to negotiate about the glass. Smiling, Shen Lang invited, Mr. Huang, please follow me to my secret workshop. Shortly after, Shen Lang showed Huang Tong the mirror-making process, explaining it from start to finish. Huang Tong was completely won over, marveling, I never imagined the mirrors were simply made by coating glass with a thin layer of silver. The only challenge is ensuring the purity of the silver. Such a straightforward method directly netted 1 million. Shen Lang is truly a business genius. Shen Lang then handed Huang Tong a booklet, saying, this contains all the processes for making glass mirrors. It now belongs to the Heavenly Path Society. Upon opening the booklet, Huang Tong couldn't help but admire, the documentation of the production process is so thorough. Indeed, knowledge is wealth. The Heavenly Path Society exchanging 
one million for such an ally is absolutely worth it. Then, Wang Tong spoke again, young Master Shen is truly chosen by heaven. As an elder of the Heavenly Path Society, I wish to form a strategic alliance with you. Shen Lang raised his hand, congratulations to Elder Huang on your promotion. The handshake between the two was not just a promise between individuals, but a pledge of true alliance between the mythical Turtle Count's mansion and the Heavenly Path Society. Now allies, Shen Lang knew what he had to do. He proposed to Huang Tong that the Heavenly Path Society only needs to purchase glass from the mythical Turtle Count's mansion for the next five years. Afterward, the glass-making process would be entirely transferred to the Heavenly Path Society. The only condition was that all future glass products would involve a 3% commission for the Jean family. Huang Tong had no objections and nodded in agreement, thereby officially sealing the deal between the two parties. With only two days left until the mythical Turtle Count's mansion needed to clear its debts, the mansion received an unexpected visitor, Shui Pan, the heir of the Martial Peace Count's mansion. He had come to break off his sister, Shui Li's engagement, using her secret illness as the reason. Hearing this, Shen Lang couldn't help but chuckle sardonically. What secret illness? Isn't it just that something's rotten there? This inadvertent laugh caught Shui Pan's attention, making Shen Lang quickly turn his head away in feigned indifference. Lady Jean, already at her breaking point, ordered a brazier to be brought over and, without a second word, threw the marriage contract into the fire. She then sternly told Shui Pan, Go back and tell your father that I hope the Su family does not regret their actions today. Shui Pan, unfazed by Lady Jin's emotions, and seeing the marriage contract burn, tore up his copy as well. He then pretentiously offered, Madam Jests, I've heard that Lord Mythical Turtle is unwell, and I wish to visit on my father's behalf. Lady Jean flatly rejected him, there's no need for a visit, it would only make my husband nauseous to see you, please leave if there's nothing else. Shen Lang chimed in, mother-in-law, it seems our ancestors really should have wiped out the Shui family completely, so we wouldn't have to deal with a pack of ingrates biting back at us now. Shui Pan left without showing any visible reaction, simply bidding farewell before turning to leave. However, shortly after Shui Pan's departure, another visitor arrived, Ning Jing, the younger brother of Sovereign Sixth Prince Ning Zheng. Lady Jean, along with Jean Mulan and others, promptly went out to greet him. Unlike Ning Zheng, Ning Jing was not known for his honesty and straightforwardness, and his sudden visit raised questions. Ning Jing's gaze drifted towards Jean Mulan, inwardly remarking on her beauty. After everyone was seated, Lady Jean politely inquired about the purpose of Ning Jing's visit. Ning Jing pompously stated, I heard my uncle is seriously ill, so I came to visit. I also heard that the mythical Turtle Count's mansion owes a huge debt that's due soon. To alleviate my aunt's stress, I've come to donate some money. Lady Jean was startled by this. Everyone knew the sixth prince was notoriously selfish and greedy, a true miser who never parted with his money. His offer to donate money surely hid an ulterior motive. Then, Ning Jing shouted for his men to bring in the money. Following his command, dozens of guards entered, carrying chests, causing Lady Jean to exclaim at the apparent amount. However, when Ning Jing ordered the chests to be opened, they were found to be filled with copper coins. Shen Lang activated his titanium alloy eyes and began calculating the number of copper coins using his intellect. Though the chests seemed to contain hundreds of thousands of copper coins, when converted to silver, they amounted to only a few thousand, and in gold, merely a few hundred. Ning Jing, you're really something. This isn't support, it's clearly adding insult to injury. Ning Jing then bowed and said, My palace's daily expenses are high, and I haven't saved much money. This is all I have. I hope my aunt won't find it too little. Upon hearing this, Shen Lang inwardly cursed, You, the sixth prince, are famously greedy, exploiting your favor with the sovereign to amass wealth, and now you claim this is all you can offer? What's your real purpose here? To humiliate us? Lady Jean managed to suppress her anger and said, We do not accept charity without cause. The Jean family cannot accept such a grand gesture from the sixth prince. Please take these back. However, Ning Jing ignored her, continuing on his own agenda. I am related to my aunt, and I find the location of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, close to the sea with its pleasant scenery, to be very appealing. Moreover, the castle's position atop a mountain offers an excellent vantage point overall. Soon, I will come of age, and I will ask my father to grant this place to me. At these words, Lady Jin's expression darkened, her anger nearly reaching its peak. Seeing their mother trembling with rage, Jean Mulan and Shen Lang quickly stepped in to calm her, with Shen Lang issuing a dismissal. Sixth Prince, my mother-in-law is not feeling well and cannot continue to entertain guests. Please, come back another day. Ning Jing, realizing his stay was unwelcome, arrogantly said, I'll come back the day after tomorrow, before strutting off. Watching Ning Jing's departure, Shen Lang smirked with deep significance. Such arrogance and presumptuousness from the Sixth Prince are truly detestable, yet, if used correctly in the future, he could bring ruin to many. Lady Jean, relieved to see Ning Jing gone, sat up straight, fuming, I never thought that waste would covet our castle, even daring to revel in our misfortune. Shen Lang consoled her, mother-in-law, don't worry, I'll soon make a strong statement against these people, showing them that the Jean family is not to be trifled with. On the day before the mythical Turtle Count's mansion's accounts were 
were to be settled. The seemingly fragile Miss Chi Yu from the Chi family also came to visit Shen Lang, barely seated. She adopted a sympathetic tone. Young Master Shen, did you know that Lin Ma is dead? Shen Lang calmly sipped his tea and responded, I'm aware, but his death has nothing to do with me. Chi Yu continued, now that both the Su and Lin family's silk industries have collapsed, and most farmers in the province of the Southern Journey rely on sericulture for their livelihood, the absence of buyers for the cocoons would spell disaster. My Chi family has decided to take over the workshops and the entire silk industry from the Su and Lin families to save these farmers. Additionally, aware of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion's urgent need for funds, my family is interested in purchasing the Jean family's prime mulberry fields at a high price. Observing Chi Yu's harmless facade, Shen Lang couldn't help but think, becoming Zhang Ji's fiancé really has its perks. The Jean and Chi families had no prior connection, yet now they're reaching out to the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. With a resigned gesture, Shen Lang thought, we can't sell the land right now, nor can we let her know we have a contingency plan. If this gets back to the prefect, it could spoil everything. It seems I have no choice but to put on an act with her again. What a nuisance. The day of reckoning finally arrived, with gloomy weather setting the stage. Various powers, like vultures to carrion, gathered, ready for the feast of division. Many creditors of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, led by Prince Uncle Ning Chi, marched into the castle, signaling the drama's commencement. The mythical Turtle Count, despite his illness, came forward with his family to greet them. His pale, emaciated appearance suggested he might be blown away by a mere gust of wind. His continuous coughing while greeting Prince Uncle Ning Chi was a harrowing sight. Upon witnessing this, Ning Chi felt conflicted and said, I once warned you that winning the Isle of Gold Mountain dispute might not be in your best interest. You should have known when to stop. If you had listened to me, you wouldn't have ended up in this state. The mythical turtle count, through clenched teeth, responded, Jean Jua is grateful for Prince Uncle's advice, but I'd rather be shattered jade than intactile. He then mustered all his strength to shout, today, to all present, whatever knife you wish to thrust at the Jean family, go ahead. I, Jean Jua, will not back down. As the mythical turtle count's firm declaration resonated, Ning Chi's expression grew solemn, and the eager creditors behind him seemed ready to pounce. Since the mythical turtle count has put it so bluntly, don't blame us for being ruthless later on. Shen Lang, standing behind the mythical turtle count, silently praised his father-in-law's acting skills, thinking, father-in-law is getting better at this. Just hold on a little longer, our counterattack is imminent. Soon, everyone took their seats, with Ning Chi Prince Uncle presiding over the proceedings. Zhu Rong the governor and significant figures like the sixth prince Ning Jing acted as witnesses, facing the mythical turtle count's family and the creditors. In the first round, Xu Tingyu presented a debt note from the previous mythical turtle count for borrowing funds to fight the pirate king Chiu Tianwei, asking if the current count acknowledged this debt. The mythical turtle count openly admitted to it. Xu Tingyu then stated, including interest, this contract amounts to 1.7 million gold coins. The mythical turtle count has paid back 1 million over the past 20 years, leaving a remaining debt of 700,000 gold coins. The deadline has now arrived, but a month ago, your son-in-law Shen Lang mentioned that your family could no longer afford to repay. Is that correct? Shen Lang confirmed this, and the mythical turtle count, unable to contain himself any longer, broke into violent coughing. Lady Jean rushed to his side, exclaiming, husband, when she noticed his handkerchief soaked with fresh blood. Zhu Rong the governor silently observed the scene, pondering, it seems the mythical turtle count's days are numbered. If he falls, the Jean family might be finished. However, Xu Tingyu was relentless, continuing, this contract was secured with Cliff Watch Island as collateral. Since your family cannot repay the debt, as per the sovereign's decree communicated by Ning Chi Prince Uncle, our hidden origin society will reclaim Cliff Watch Island. If there are no objections, please, mythical turtle count, sign here. The hidden origin society will ask the governor to deploy troops to take over Cliff Watch Island. Hearing Xu Tingyu's words, the mythical turtle count coughed violently again and then fainted. Seizing the moment, Xu Tingyu added fuel to the fire. Even if the mythical turtle count is unable to sign, the contract is here. Ming Chi Prince Uncle is here. The minister is here. It can be enforced. Lady Jean was furious. Xu Tingyu, don't think we don't know why all of my father-in-law's military deployments were known to Chiu Tianwei. It was your hidden origin society that leaked the information to him, leading to our complete defeat. An elder from the hidden origin society retorted, Madam Su, do not make baseless accusations. Words have consequences. This only angered Lady Jean further. To hear such shameless words from an elder of the Hidden Origin Society truly enlightens me, Su Pei Pei. As she was about to continue her rebuttal, Shen Lang quickly intervened, asking her to rest with her husband and leave the rest to him. Lady Jean silently handed over the family seal to Shen Lang. Seeing this, Xu Tingyu internally scoffed. The Jean family now relies on such a minor son-in-law. No wonder it's about to fall. After Jean Hui and Jean Zhong escorted Lady Jean and the mythical turtle count away, Shen Lang took the seal and sat down. Gentlemen, from now on, I will fully represent my father-in-law in negotiations with all of you. Shooting you, displaying a disdainful attitude, tapped
dumped on the table. There's nothing to discuss. Just sign. Unable to contain his greed. Shooting you pressed. Son and Washin. There's no need to play dumb. If your Jean family wishes to maintain dignity, sign this transfer agreement. Otherwise, I will have no choice but to ask the governor to send troops to the island and forcibly evict you. Shin Lang, pretending to panic, agreed to sign. Then, I should sign. It would be rude not to accept such generosity. However, his hand holding the pen hesitated to make the mark. The hall was silent, with all the creditors eagerly watching Shin Lang's pen, internally urging him to hurry up and sign. Why the hell don't you sign it? Suddenly, Shin Lang set the pen down and said, not only the Hidden Origin Society is here to collect debts today, if there are any other contracts, bring them all out. As soon as these words were spoken, the elders of the Hidden Origin Society were all stunned. Shin Lang, that's quite the bold statement you have there. Just our family's debt. Eugene family can't even pay it off, and you want everyone to chip in? You must be out of your mind. Seeing that everyone was indifferent, Shin Lang spoke up again to urge, are there any other creditors? Come out. At this moment, the heir of the Peaceful Stability Count's mansion, Wu Yuanhua, stood up. Holding a promissory note, he said, this is the debt of the owner of the brocade and embroidery pavilion, Lin Ma. Though he is dead, the debt does not vanish with him. As a relative by marriage of the Lin family, I have the right to reclaim it. Do you, Mr. Shin, acknowledge this debt? Shin Lang, with a disdainful gesture, said, of course, I acknowledge it. Isn't it just 3,500 gold coins? Who else has debts? Hurry up and bring them out. Then, Chiu Xiao also stood up and said, 20 years ago, Jin Yu attacked our Chiu family and was utterly defeated. To seek peace, they signed a ceasefire agreement with us, agreeing to pay 9,000 gold coins each year. Though this year is the last, your family might not live past this month. Might as well settle it all now. After finishing, his gaze turned to Jin Mulan on the side. What a pity. Such a beauty. If the crown prince hadn't set his sights on her, I would have taken her for myself no matter what. At this moment, Shen Lang still showed an indifferent attitude. 9,000 gold coins, right? Acknowledge. Of course, I acknowledge. Who else? A moment later, the heir of the Marshall Peace Count's mansion, Shui Pan, also joined in. Mr. Shen, 20 years ago, when the Jin family attacked the Chiu family and lost, they wanted to provide compensation to the army but had no money. My Shui family voluntarily sent 30,000 gold coins, charged at the lowest interest rate by the Hidden Origin Society, making it a total of 51,000 gold coins with interest. But due to the relationship at that time, no contract was signed. I wonder if the Jin family acknowledges this account now. Upon hearing this, Shen Lang's expression immediately turned sour. At that time, the money sent by the Shui family was said to be given, not lent. If it comes to an argument, everything of the Marshall Peace Count's mansion and the Southern Sea Sword faction was provided by the Jean ancestors, but this amount of money is not even one ten thousandth of the Jean family's kindness towards the Shua family. In such a situation now, you even come to kick us when we're down. All right, all right, just wait. Shooting you coldly looked at Chen Lang. In just this short time, your Jean family's debt has increased by 63,500 gold coins. I'd like to see how you, Shen Lang, will pay it off. Suddenly, the vice minister of the Ministry of Revenue also stood up and said, I have more here. It's the end of the year now, and your mythical Turtle Count's mansion's taxes have not yet been submitted to the National Treasury. Currently, including the penalty, the total is 27,000 gold coins. Indeed, the U Kingdom has various projects every year, requiring old nobility to mobilize peasants for labor. It's impossible to send people from thousands of miles away to work, so the sovereign requires the nobles to convert it into money. But in these decades, the peasants' money has never been fixed, and most nobles choose to ignore it without submitting any. Only Jin Zhua, with his straightforward character, has been clear about it every year. However, this has become an excuse, being accused by the Ministry of Revenue of not paying enough. It seems you bunch of scoundrels really want to force us to sell assets in good fields, Shen Lang coldly said to them. No problem, I acknowledge all these. Is there anything else? Shooting you pointed at Shen Lang and coldly said, Stop pretending, sign quickly. We are still waiting to take over Cliff Watch Island. Shui Pan and Chou Xiao also mocked Shen Lang. If the remaining 100,000 gold coins cannot be produced, the Jean Sword Lady and 10,000 acres of fertile land can be used to settle the account. At this time, everyone's gaze was filled with mockery and cruelty. Your Jean family is completely finished this time. 800,000 gold coins is the tax of two provinces of the Southern Journey. Even if a god came now, he couldn't help your mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Shooting you said coldly, Shen Lang, you better sign quickly. We don't have time to waste here with you. Looking at the faces of these people, Shen Lang suddenly slowly stood up, letting out a cold, mocking laugh. Then, laughing wildly, tore up the agreement in front of him. He then tore off the black coat he was wearing, revealing the luxurious brocade robe underneath. Shooting Yu's face changed dramatically. Shen Lang, have you gone mad? How dare you tear up the debt contract? Shen Lang raised the black robe in his hand and waved it. Shooting Yu, I signed your mother's agreement. You think 800,000 gold coins will make the Jean family sell off assets? Dream on. Then he pointed at the others and cursed. All of you bastards, stand properly. My Jean family won't be short of 800,000 for you. After a loud shout, open the gate.
gate. As his words fell, the ceiling suddenly cracked, and a dazzling golden light enveloped the entire hall. The next second, gold coins poured down like a torrential rain, shocking everyone present with this splendid scene. If you ask if it hurts to be hit by gold coins, of course, it does. But they didn't care, letting the gold coins pelt their bodies. But Jean Mulan and Jin Lang didn't want to be hit. They were prepared, immediately holding up a wooden umbrella, though each gold coin only weighs 35 grams. When they fell onto the table like a small mountain, the actual weight immediately crushed the table. Moments after the last gold coin fell, everyone present was still in a dreamlike state, unable to believe what they saw. Is this really 800,000 gold coins? How did Shen Lang manage to gather this amount of money in one month? Looking at the expressions of everyone present, Shen Lang felt incredibly pleased inside. This grand show of arrogance made him thrilled to every single hair on his body. He disdainfully said to everyone in front of him, Ladies and gentlemen, these gold coins here are definitely more than 800,000. We're too lazy to deliver them to you, so just count and take them away yourselves. Whatever is extra, consider it a gift from the Jean family. Is it just these few hundred thousand gold coins? You've mobilized the Imperial censors and manipulated public opinion, making it seem like our mythical Turtle Count's mansion is on the brink of death. Was that really necessary? Is this all the ambition you have? At this moment, Xu Tingyu trembled as he looked at the gold coins in his hand. What do you mean by just a few hundred thousand gold coins? In the past, these gold coins could hire 3,000 warriors, recruit 5,000 civilian soldiers, and even hire a fleet with hundreds of warships. But now, Shen Lang can use these 800,000 gold coins to overwhelm them, earning the right to boast unchallenged. Then, Shen Lang continued to boast. People outside say that I spend 300 gold coins on a single piece of clothing, that I need 100 fish for a meal. That's simply unjust to me. Look at my clothes. None of them are worth less than 500 gold coins. I need tens of thousands of fish for a meal, because I consume over half a pound of caviar at one sitting. Our mythical Turtle Count's mansion has plenty of money, not just 800,000, even 1 million, 2 million, I can afford it. Such rumors simply lower our status. After finishing, he turned to the dignitaries, Prince Uncle, the Governor, Imperial Censor. Today you have all witnessed that. My mythical Turtle Count's mansion has cleared all debts. I ask the dignitaries to acknowledge the debt clearance of my mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Then, Shen Lang walked up to Ning Chi Prince Uncle and bowed. Prince Uncle, today, with you as my witness, has my mythical Turtle Count's mansion cleared all debts to the Hidden Origin Society and everyone present? After this, the Hidden Origin Society and others no longer have the right to force us to hand over Cliff Watch Island, right? Ming Chi Prince Uncle coughed lightly and announced, from today onwards, the ownership of Cliff Watch Island will permanently belong to the Jean family. After speaking, he looked at Chen Lang again. Last time, I just thought this young man was quite talented, but this time, his method of turning the situation around is truly astonishing. At this moment, Chen Lang said, shooting you, now that our debts are settled, stop coveting my family's treasure island. That's a golden island, after all. Saying this, he pretended to realize he had let something slip and quickly covered his mouth. All right, I'm very busy, so I won't keep you all any longer. He then left with Jean Mulan and his brother-in-law, striding away. The only one left silent at the side was the sixth prince, whose eyes flashed with a hint of ferocity, deliberately ignoring me in public. Well done, Shen Lang. You, a mere son-in-law, dare not to take me, the sixth prince. Seriously? The dignitaries watched as Shen Lang and the others left, then also stood up to leave, leaving only the Hidden Origin Society and others looking at each other, and the gold scattered all over the floor. At this time, shooting you said, Everyone, please take your share. I'm about to have people count and load the gold. Wu Yuanhua bowed to shooting you, indicating that he was giving up his claim to the debt. And seeing this, Shui Pan also left. They weren't here for the money. Now that the Jean family was unharmed and had even slapped everyone's face, there was no point in staying. Shooting you approached Chiu Xiao and said, Young master of the city, please take back your 9,000 gold coins. Chiu Xiao bent down to pick up a gold coin and suddenly said, Did you notice the rough craftsmanship of these gold coins? In the absence of any marks or text, it seems like they are newly minted coins, and this gold bullion seems to have been recently smelted, not yet having undergone the final purification. Remember what Shen Lang said before he left? Golden Island, the reason he was so desperate to keep Cliff Watch Island, is there. A mythical turtle count with merely two or three thousand private soldiers dares to hide such a tremendous wealth. Aren't they afraid of being wiped out? After finishing, he no longer paid attention to Xu Tingyu, nor did he take the 9,000 gold coins, and walked out laughing. At this moment, in Chiu Zhao's heart, the seed of greed had already sprouted. What's 9,000 gold coins? He was after the island filled with gold mines. Watching Chiu Zhao's departing figure, Xu Tingyu suddenly felt a chill in his heart. Trouble is brewing. This is going to lead to big trouble. Meanwhile, inside the mythical Turtle City Lord's mansion, numerous dignitaries had already set up a victory feast, eagerly awaiting the news of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion's downfall. Some were even planning the uses for the 10,000 acres of land. At this time, Wu Yuanhua walked in from the main entrance, and all the seated dignitaries swarmed up to him. However, facing the clamor of these people, Wu Yuanhua, who was already depressed, became even 
more irritable. He raised his hand to silence everyone and said, Stop dreaming, we lost. Shen Lang didn't bring out 700,000 gold coins, it was 800,000. Not only that, he turned these gold coins into a golden rain. That fell on our heads, humiliating us thoroughly. Upon hearing this, the room fell silent. Then, someone expressed skepticism, thinking that Wu Yuanhua was joking. Shen Lang isn't a god, how could he possibly come up with 800,000 gold coins in one month? At this point, Wu Yuanhua could no longer suppress the emotions inside him and yelled, Do you think I'm in the mood to joke? Go back and prepare. Something big is about to happen. After saying this, he no longer paid attention to everyone, turned around, and walked straight towards the exit. Meanwhile, inside the Jin High Count's mansion, Tang Luan and his son, Tang Yun, were still completely unaware, toasting and drinking in the courtyard, discussing how the mythical Turtle Count's mansion would be destroyed. Tang Luan said excitedly, Our century-old enemy is finally going to be finished. When Jin Zhou suddenly appeared, he shocked the world. So what? Now he's still ruined by Jin Zhuo, this mediocre person. If Jin Zhou knew everything that's happening now, he'd probably be so angry he'd jump out of his grave. At this moment, Tang Yun reminded his father, we're managing the Cliff Watch Island Iron Mine for the Hidden Origin Society and taking 30% of the net profits. Although we also manage the salt fields and take half of the earnings, we have to submit 70% of those profits to the Hidden Origin Society, and 70% of the Isle of Gold Mountain also goes to Chiu Tianwei. Comparing the effort and returns, our family is actually at a loss. Tang Luan laughed loudly after hearing this. Although our family is at a loss, the mythical turtle count is completely ruined. To bring down the Jin family at such a cost, I'm willing. I accept this loss. At this moment, Chiu Xiao walked in with a gloomy face. Tang Luan excitedly asked if he had brought good news. Chiu Xiao coldly said, Tang Luan, don't be too pleased with yourself. The Jin family hasn't been destroyed. That pretty boy didn't bring out 700,000, but 800,000, and I'm sure his family must have more gold. Hearing this news, Tang Luan trembled as if struck by lightning. How? How is this possible? That's 700,000 gold coins. Suddenly, as if realizing something, Tang Luan frantically asked Chiu Xiao if Shen Lang could bring out this money. Why would the mythical turtle count be so destitute? Why would Su Pei Pei be borrowing money everywhere and become the laughing stock of the world? Chiu Xiao could only tell him all that the Jin family did was an act. They performed a grand conspiracy play for everyone. Hearing this, Tang Luan's heart completely collapsed, and the dizziness from the alcohol made him fall heavily to the ground. Then he managed to squeeze out a voice. I've given the economic lifeline of my Tang family, the Isle of Gold Mountain, to you, the Chiu family, for nothing. After giving so much, you're telling me now that the Jin family is safe and sound. What does that make my Tang family? Doesn't that make me, Tang Luan, a laughing stock in the eyes of the world? This blow caused Tang Luan's chest to suddenly tighten. In the next second, a mouthful of fresh blood spurted out, while the entire mythical turtle city was in chaos. Zhang Chong had already disappeared from everyone's sight for a long time. He remained silent when others attacked the Jin family. When others demanded the Jin family hand over Cliff Watch Island, he made no statement as if he had become invisible. The only thing he did was to report to the Sovereign more than a month ago that he was seriously ill and needed several months of rest. He seemed to have gone from a Star View Kingdom to a person who had fallen on hard times in the mouths of others. Miss Chi Yu appeared outside the Zhang family's old house, and at that time, two people were casually talking about the news of Zhang Chong being defeated by Jin family's son-in-law. He never recovered after that incident, and the Jin High Count boldly gave away the Isle of Gold Mountain just to put the Jin family in a desperate situation. Listening to the discussions from outside, Chi Yu's face grew increasingly ugly. Entering the house, Chi Yu went straight to Zhang Chong's bedside, and then respectfully informed him. Shen Lang brought out 800,000 gold coins. He has won again. Hearing this, Zhang Chong suddenly sat up from the bed. This is impossible. Absolutely impossible. Suddenly, a sharp pain on his forehead made him instinctively cover his forehead. Unexpectedly, Shen Lang's cunning had exceeded his own understanding of him. What exactly happened this month? Chi Yu was also baffled about this matter, because not just her, everyone was clueless about how Shen Lang managed to do it. Moments later, Zhang Ji returned to his father's room, completely unable to hide the shock in his heart. Shen Lang really brought out 800,000 gold coins, just as his father had predicted. He had planned everything well before the dispute over the Isle of Gold Mountain, playing everyone in the palm of his hand. Admiring Shen Lang's cunning, Zhang Chong had to admire, thinking three, even four steps ahead, facing such a formidable opponent in my life, is truly a great pleasure. Then Zhang Chong spoke again, if I'm not mistaken, Chiu Zhao's end is near, and it will be a miserable one. Given Shen Lang's character, Chiu Xiao has repeatedly framed the Count's mansion, and Shen Lang's lack of retaliation is definitely not normal. And next, he surely has a big net waiting for countless people to fall into. Who knows how many will perish in his grand scheme? Right now, I've already heard the drums of war sounding, seeing the downfall of Chiu Tianwei's maritime empire, and the destruction of the hundred-year-old Tang family. Zhang Ji, get ready, the battle is about to begin. This time, Shen Lang will definitely eliminate all these families opposing him in one fell swoop. But we will not only not stop
stop him. We will cooperate with him, using him to clear all obstacles for the sovereign's new policies. Then he told Zhang Ji. Oh, by the way, let me tell you, Su Chan Chan is not dead. Hearing this, Zhang Ji's face changed dramatically. How is that possible? That night, I clearly heard that Su Chan Chan was burned to death in her room. Zhang Chong looked at his son and asked, Did you see her body with your own eyes? Zhang Ji was stunned. After the fire was extinguished that night, I went to check. Indeed, I did not see another body's trace. I thought it had been turned to ash by the fire. Zhang Chong continued, I've sent someone to inspect the ruins of the Su family. There was a secret room in Su Chan Chan's room, and it stored buckets of water. And if I'm not mistaken, she is now in league with Xin Lang. Hearing this, Zhang Ji was shocked. Then I will find a way to kill her now. Zhang Chong shook his head. As far as I know, now, Su Chan Chan has already infiltrated Cho Yao's side. This must also be Xin Lang's idea. Since she has become Xin Lang's secret agent, we should cooperate with him. Otherwise, with Cho Yao guarding furious Tide City, who could take it down? Meanwhile, the news of Xin Lang raising 800,000 gold coins and raining gold coins on the dignitaries in his mansion quickly shocked the world, becoming a hot topic for discussion. Under the analysis of various experts, news soon spread that the mythical Turtle Count's mansion had discovered a gold mine. After all, raising 800,000 gold coins in a month is something not even the wealthiest merchants or the sovereign could achieve, let alone the fact that the Jean family now guards Cliff Watch Island, forbidding anyone from approaching. This move made people even more convinced that Cliff Watch Island indeed had a gold mine. The scene shifts to the garden of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, where the now debt-free mythical Turtle Count no longer feigns illness, regaining his usual complexion. Lady Jean, seeing her husband rejuvenated by her son-in-law's weight loss medicine without any side effects, and even more dashing, was very tempted and hurriedly asked Xin Lang if she could also take it. Hearing this, Xin Lang immediately showed a shocked expression. My heavens, Madam Mother-in-Law, is there any woman in the world with a better figure than yours? Adding a little would mean overweight, losing a little would mean too thin. With such a figure, do you still need to lose weight? Aren't you leaving no room for other women in the world? Lady Jean was already delighted in her heart, and turned to teach the mythical term Turtle Count, this straightforward man, you should learn something. Seeing this, the mythical Turtle Count quickly changed the subject. We're getting off topic, off topic. Shen Lang, let's talk about the next plan. Shen Lang, seeing this, also put away his playful expression and said seriously, Father-in-law, with the great battle approaching, we need to proceed with our plan to recruit aggressively, expanding the army by 2000. The mythical Turtle Count asked after a moment of silence, should we recruit from outside or from within our territory? The wandering warriors outside have high combat capabilities, but low loyalty. While we can only select some militia from within our domain, which might not be sufficient in terms of combat effectiveness, Xin Lang laughed. No worries. Though we speak of a great war, we're essentially just deploying troops on the island for show. It's more about cunning and strategy, defeating the enemy with intelligence. We only need to recruit and complete the expansion within three days. Father-in-law, you will then lead 4,000 troops to station on Cliff Watch Island, leaving only 1,000 troops in the mansion. Additionally, Elder Huang from the Heavenly Path Society has unconditionally supported us with 100,000 gold coins two days ago. I will use this 400,000 gold coins, and we will spend 400,000 gold coins to decorate this island of gold, transform all the previous iron mines into gold mines. We must make everyone believe that we have shifted our strategic focus to Cliff Watch Island, even expressing the will to abandon our land and castle, but not Cliff Watch Island. The mythical turtle count nodded repeatedly. I will set off immediately after we complete the expansion in three days. He then couldn't help but sigh. If I weren't an insider, I would definitely definitely believe that Cliff Watch Island has discovered a huge gold mine. Knowing Cho Xiao and Tang Luan, they will surely be convinced this plan really has deceived everyone in the world. However, Xin Lang shook his head. There is one person who will not be fooled, and with his intelligence, he must have seen through this plan long ago. Haven't you noticed? Zhang Chong has been absent for several months. He claims to be recuperating at home, which is the biggest abnormality. The mythical turtle count was shocked. Our strategy is flawless. How could he possibly see through it? Xin Lang explained. A truly astute player won't be bothered by your feints. He will directly grasp your true intention, seeing through your ultimate goal. If I'm not mistaken, our prefect wants to use this chess game to eliminate three major forces to establish his century-long legacy. When the snipe and the clam fight, the fisherman profits. Zhang Chong wants to be that fisherman who laughs last. Xin Lang's analysis was spot on. For others, this chess game might seem complicated and confusing, but for him and Zhang Chong, it's almost like playing an open game. Then, turning the conversation, Xin Lang once again looked at Mulan, instructing her to complete the recruitment task as soon as possible. Upon receiving the instructions, Mulan reluctantly got up to leave, but her mind was still on the promise made in the round room with Shen Lang before. Thinking of this, she stopped, turned back, and asked Shen Lang, Husband, do you remember the bet you made with me? Shen Lang looked at Jean Mulan with a puzzled face. What bet? Mulan was speechless. This big blockhead, he actually forgot such an important thing, but since their parents were present, she could only leave in ha. 
off, her face flushed with irritation. However, in this household, Jean Mulan wasn't the only one feeling anxious. At that moment, little Bing couldn't help but complain inwardly, Miss, you can't always hesitate. If you don't make a move, when will I ever get the chance to act on my feelings for the young master? This is going to kill me.